Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos for teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between. And this is part 150. I can't believe that. We've already made 150 episodes. I can't thank you enough. And this is Camo Cloaks, how to paint camouflage cloaks on, on Imperial Fist or any Space Marine, really. Uh, scouts. So today we're painting this camo cloak. Uh, I primed it gray and then white from above, just to get the light color for the uh, actually for the yellow armor. And I started base coating it with Castellan Green. Now, as always, I will be thinning down my paints with some Lamia Medium. You want your paints to be nice and thin and to go on uh, just you know nice and thin colors because we're going to be using a lot of colors today. We don't want any um, colors going clumpy. Want them to go nice and thin. Now, if you find that after a single application, you find your paints, uh, your paint coverage to be a little too thin, especially after you know going over a white or gray primer, just feel free to do a second coat. Make sure you get a nice solid foundation before proceeding to the next step. So, as you see right now, I'm just going to take my Castellan Green and apply it over the uh, Camel Cloak. Not too interesting of a step, but that's okay. Just take your time. Make sure to stay in the lines and make sure a nice solid foundation before proceeding to the next step. As you can see, I'm just going to get into my time, make a nice coat on the inside and the outside. This is of course in double time because uh, this step took a little bit of time, that's okay double speed. And I'm just going to go with the standard uh, camouflage pattern, you know, uh, standard like forest camouflage pattern for this one. Now it would make sense for what the camo cloaks would look like in uh, for this particular army. And there we go. I mean, that was all done. And I'm happy with the first coat. I then hit it with a Thonian Camel Shade. Now the reason is I really wanted to get in the recesses and have some deep, dark shadowing, um, as opposed to, you know, that way it has a bit more detail to it. As you can see, the Thonian Camo Shade is, is going to be nice. It has that very uh, forest you know, green color to it. As you can see, the key is just to get a nice solid coat over the area and let it completely dry before proceeding to the next step. Make sure to cover the entire coverage. You don't want it to go halfway. You want to cover the entire surface. And now we add those deep recesses to the cloak. And when that was completely dry, I took some Straka Green and did about a one one mix of Castello and Green and Straka Green. You can do multiple colors if you want to build up the, um, the raised surfaces and work your way downwards. I just wanted to do a relatively quick coat and this will dry slightly darker as you can see and more blended in. And once again, I thinned down all my GW paints with Lamia Medium. As you can see, just building up the raised surfaces, leaving the recesses, the dark, Athonium camo shaded, striking green. You're just consistently highlighting up the, uh, the raised areas. Just make sure it's all nice and even. That's about it for the uh, the greens. Now we're going to turn our attention to the camo pattern. So I'm going to take some uh, a mix of half XVA and a Shabdi Bone, so a little lighter brown. And I'm just going to do some, basically, some squiggles. Um, and some camo pattern, as you can see, it just random shapes you try to the key for this is trying to be random and it's hard to be random sometimes you're just trying to be random with the size the shape and the location and just continue it on 
around the cape and uh, keep going. Feel free to get in the recesses and the raised areas. This is of course thinned down so it'll actually take advantage of the deep recesses that we did in the previous step. And so the key is just trying to be random. That's hard. As you can see, I even inadvertently evenly spaced it and then I try to fix it uh, by adding more. And of course, I've just changed the size and shape of the pattern. So I'm just taking my time going around the entire cape and uh, just getting this pattern going. that was done, as you can see when it's dry, I then go to my next color, which is more Fang Brown. So we're going to go to a darker reddish brown, as you can see that the first pattern is all on. And I'm going to continue doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally um, overlap the more Fang Brown in some areas over one of the previous steps, and then try to get a good amount of it into the green areas, right? Because it's right now it's over green, and I just want to balance more of the colors for the camel pattern. So you see now it's I'm intentionally going over some of the brown the previous brown areas and changing the shape to make some thinner and different and more odd shaped. And then I'm just gonna go and add more of the more pink brown pattern throughout the uh, the cape once again. And this is the key is trying to be more random, but uh, again, yeah, you find yourself almost evenly spacing it, but that's okay. Just keep going with the pattern. And the pattern, the really cool thing about this camo pattern is it just kind of presents itself in the end. You do one color at a time, and then you see that the pattern start to emerge by just through the randomness of the colors overlapping. You see, so most of it is going over the green areas, but some of it will intentionally go over the, um, the light brown from the previous step. And then we're going to take some black, but in this case, I'm going to use a dark matte gray as always. So some gray liner, and I'm going to repeat this process one more time. So I'm going to intentionally go over some of the brown areas from the previous step, some of the brown from the two steps ago, and then some of the green. And uh, just continue with random shapes. And this is kind of the connecting piece of the camo pattern. As you can see, it's going to really connect it and also um, create the pattern, essentially, right? Because it, 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 it ties it all together. And you can use each color progressing to change the shape slightly of the previous steps, which adds more to that random shape pattern and uh, creates the camouflage, the forest camo pattern that we're going for for this camo cloak. It's uh, The key is just take your time with each color, just try to, to get more random shapes, different sizes, different patterns, different locations, and then uh, you can continue to, to manipulate the pattern as you go um, with each step. But in the end, it doesn't take very long, as you can see here. And uh, we have a nice camouflage pattern on this camo cloak which is what we're going for. He'll clearly blend in in his surroundings uh, in, if he was in a forest situation. And when that was completely done, he's all good to go. So here's what the model looks like when it's completely done with a camo cloak. As you can see, it's definitely a camouflage pattern and uh, he would definitely blend in in the forest. It didn't take very long. And there you go. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a bit about painting camo cloaks. Stay tuned for next week's episode, part 151, which is just around the corner. Please like my video, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so, and leave comments in the comment section down below of what you want to see in future videos. So stay tuned for more painting tutorials, until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.